Now, tomorrow marks the anniversary of the U.S. shooting down an Iranian civilian airliner with 290 passengers and crew aboard. Iran, flight, Iran Air Flight 655 was brought down over the Strait of Hormuz by a U.S. Navy guided missile in 1988. RT correspondent Jahan Hafiz has this story. As U.S. President Barack Obama issues new sanctions against Iran, he offers these words of encouragement to the Iranian people. In Iran and around the world, the United States of America will continue to stand with those who seek justice and progress and the human rights and dignity of all people. 22 years ago, 290 Iranian civilians were killed by an American Navy ship. An incident the U.S. has refused to apologize for. Oh, dead. We had him got it. That was a dead on. At the height of the Iran Iraq War, the USS Vincennes in the Strait of Hormuz blew up Iranian airliner 655, killing all 290 citizens on board, including nearly 70 children. At the time of the deadly incident, the U.S. Navy said it was a case of mistaken identity and believed the plane to be an F-14 fighter jet, the same ones the U.S. sold to the Shah of Iran just 10 years before. The bold-faced lies about, you know, the plane was descending, it was uh, approaching an altitude where it was prepared to attack us. If it was flying at that low of an altitude, um, it would clearly have been seen for what it was, not an F-14. Navid, an Iranian-American, refers back to the initial investigation. It absolutely was a cover-up, and even, but even the cover-up itself was denied. Not only just the fact that a mistake happened, the fact that a cover-up happened to cover up the mistake was also denied. Like millions of Iranians around the world, Navid will mark July 3rd as a day of mourning. We're showing the Iranian government that its actions have consequences. And if it persists, the pressure will continue to mount and his isolation will continue to deepen. She was the mother of a U.S. student expected home for Christmas on Pan Am Flight 103. The charred bodies of Iranian civilians floating in Iranian waters did not evoke the same reaction when the Lockerbie bombing happened just five months after the IR-655 incidents. Years later, the U.S. expressed deep disgust when the Lockerbie bomber was released. The images that we saw uh, <clears throat> in Libya yesterday were outrageous and disgusting. I believe that given the operating environment, Captain Rogers acted reasonably and did what his nation expected of him in the defense of his ship and crew. When you look, for example, at the very different responses to the Lockerbie incident as opposed to this incident, it's clear that the lives of some people are inherently greater value than the lives of other people and it's 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 sad and it's unfortunate but it's true the crew of the USS Vincennes was later awarded combat action medals and the captain of the ship was awarded the Legion of Merit no one from the USS Vincennes was ever penalized for taking down the Airbus the cover up the medals it, it just speaks to a, a larger mentality that is at play here which is not only can we do no wrong, but all of our actions are inherently right. The U.S. later settled the case with the Iranians at $131 million, compared to the near $3 billion Libya paid the United States for their Lockerbie bombing. Hi, I was calling to get a general comment about an incident that took place 22 years ago. Call the State Department. So now we're on the phone with the State Department, and they say we have to call the DOD back to get a response. The DOD had originally let, sent us over to the Navy, the Navy to the State Department. Now the State Department is sending us back to the Department of Defense. The fact that George Bush said that, for example, I will never apologize for the U.S. no matter what the facts are, it's not even a matter of apologizing for the U.S. It's just a matter of admitting a, a simple wrongdoing. And so, as the U.S. gears up to celebrate their Independence Day on the 4th of July, the Islamic Republic of Iran will be mourning 22 years since the American Navy killed nearly 300 of their people. Jahan Hafiz, RT, Washington, D.C. Well, Jahan's actually here in the studio with me to tell us more on this story. Now, Jahan, you know, I bet this is a story that most Americans have absolutely no idea about and never even heard of. I was asking people around the newsroom today, and indeed there are even some people here at RT that 
that didn't even know uh, that this event had happened. Whatever happened to the investigation? Well, it's an excellent question. The investigation did turn out to be a cover-up, and although the U.S. Navy didn't admit to it, it was definitely exposed by a number of different journalists. And so the way they tried to cover it was actually quite interesting. They mentioned that they, the USS Vincennes was trying to save this Stovall boat, this Liberian ship. In fact, that ship never existed. And then they didn't interview a number of the crew members, including Captain McKenna, who made the call to shoot down the uh, IR-655. So for the most part, they tried to cover up to, you know, to shift gears from the end of the Iran-Iraq war into now the Gulf War. But essentially, that was definitely exposed by both John Barry and Roger Charles of Newsweek. It's also where we found out that the uh, USS Vincennes was also in Iranian waters when they gunned down an Iranian airliner. Now, and in 1996, the government finally made an agreement with, uh, with Iran and apparently paid out over 61 million dollars. You would think with that much money uh, coming into play that more people would know about it or at least that the taxpayers would deserve to know about it. Yeah, and that's just not the case because for the most part, you know, the U.S. mainstream media grinds the gears for what the American people should and should not know. And of course, why would they want the American people to know that the U.S. was responsible for killing 300 Iranian civilians, which uh, to, uh, to a large degree is considered an act of war as far as international law goes. And so that's why it's not very well known also. Um, you know, people weren't very into Google back then. You weren't able to look things up as easily as they you are today. Um, so it's, it's an incident that, you know, it's no wonder a lot of people don't know about it. Now, what I find so shocking about the story is the fact that there was this agreement, however, uh, the money was paid out, and yet the U.S. government never, uh, never apologized for it and never accepted any responsibility for it. You were making calls today to try to see if you could get an official to make a statement. Did you have any luck? I didn't, and I have tried this for the past two years. I tried to call them and find out why they will not apologize and why they won't admit the mistake. And as you saw, they're giving me the runaround. I finally went to the U.S. State Department today for the press briefing, and I asked, you know, why, what's your statement on, to, on the anniversary of this incident? They said, well, we regret the loss of life, and it was sad, and it was a long time ago. Well, why won't you apologize? And there's, of course, no response to that. So for the for the most part, it's like Agent Orange. Why won't they admit to Agent Orange? They're going to have to compensate tremendously for it and also admit to wrongdoing. Whereas in this case, as Naveed Nasir said, the U.S. will not admit to any wrongdoing, especially not if it involves apologizing to the Iranians. And definitely uh, a little ironic because just today we had Barack Obama sign uh, uh, more sanctions against the government of Iran. So I think this is probably a, a bittersweet moment too, or uh, you know, just, just an odd moment, especially for uh, Iranian people that are having this. This grim uh, holiday, this day of remembrance coming up tomorrow, and then these sanctions today. That was Jahan Hafiz filling us in on this story.